are you? Hey everyone and welcome. I'm Pastor Dan and you've tuned in to Net Church. So glad that you've joined us today. Today we're talking about vision. Not our natural sight, but our spiritual sight. You might have heard the saying, I see, said the blind man. It's as clear as mud. <laughs> well, today we're going to talk about how to clear up our spiritual vision so that we can gain valuable insights for our lives that are given to us by God. Now, I think maybe, you know, that there's certain differences between our physical, physical sight, but uh, there's probably more similarities than there are differences between the two. So some of the similarities are that we're actually born with both. When we are first born, we have physical sight and spiritual sight. The difference, well, the, the thing is that with our natural sight, because of the environment and the world that we live in, our physical sight develops right from the time that we're born. It takes time, of course, but it develops because we're surrounded by a physical realm. And so we have, you know, that's one of our main uh, senses that we use to navigate our way through life is our physical sight. So it develops over time, and it might surprise you to know that our sense of sight actually doesn't fully develop for over 20 years. It's not until we're in our early 20s that our uh, sense of sight is actually fully developed with, you know, the peripheral vision and focusing and all of that sort of stuff actually takes over 20 years to fully develop. Now, our spiritual sight also develops over time. And we're going to talk more about how our spiritual sight develops over time in a few minutes, a little bit later in this message. Another similarity that we see between physical and spiritual sight is that both allow us to see where we're going. <clears throat> Now, in the physical sense, obviously, it's very immediate. If we're walking somewhere, it helps us to see exactly where we're going, that we're not going to trip over something or fall off a cliff or fall down some stairs. Or I'm doing a lot of falling things here. Anyway, um, whatever it is, our physical sight allows us to see in the very immediate future where we're going. In a spiritual sense, it still allows us to see where we're going, but more in a long-term sense, in terms of the direction of our lives. And God allows us to see that through His insight, through our spiritual vision. And again, it's, you know, our spiritual vision is something that we're born with, yes, but it's something that we need a spiritual being, aka God, to actually help us to open our eyes to that uh, spiritual sight and be able to develop that, uh, that sense. Both types of vision also require light. <laughs> the more light we have, the better we see. And the sun today is very bright. It's causing me to squint a little bit. But what it allows me to see when I'm not looking directly at it children don't look directly at the sun that's bad for you <laughs> but what the very bright sun allows me to do is to see my surroundings very very clearly because it's so bright and our spiritual vision also requires light but a different kind of light it requires a spiritual light and uh, again we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment and as I said both uh, physical and spiritual sight uh, require our eyes to be open to work. If I close my eyes, I don't have very good physical vision right now. I can't see anything except the inside of my eyelids. 
So it, it's not very helpful to me unless I actually open my eyes. And the same goes for spiritual vision and spiritual insight. We need to have our eyes opened. It's, it's almost as if sin has caused our spiritual eyes to be sealed shut from birth. And as I said, we need a spiritual being to help open our eyes, enter Jesus Christ. <laughs> Before we go on, I'd, uh, I think we should turn to the scriptures. Let's see what the scriptures say about spiritual vision. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, it says, For we live by faith, not by sight. All right, what does that mean? Well, faith is kind of like spiritual vision. It, 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 it causes us to take steps into what physically is the unknown, where we may not be able to physically see where our steps are going to land in terms of you know the direction that our lives are going to take. But through spiritual vision and through faith, we can actually see <laughs> spiritually where we're going. So it's 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 you know it's a little bit of a difficult concept sometimes to 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 grasp, but our spiritual insight will cause us to be able to spiritually see the direction that we're going, even when we may physically not be able to see or mentally comprehend where that is. Another way to put it is that spiritual vision allows us to see things as God sees them instead of how we see them. It's a different way of looking at things. It's a different perspective. In, it, it's more than just physically seeing and it's more than just thinking and predicting. It goes way beyond that. It actually goes into an area of fully knowing through faith, not just prediction and hoping that it's going to happen, but it's, it's more about that, that faith, that knowing where we're going uh, in the spiritual realm. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 12, it says this, For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. Okay, that's a little bit of a confusing scripture. What does that mean? This scripture is talking about our lives here on earth versus the afterlife, when we die and we enter our eternal life. Now, here on earth, we know and see in part, as it says, as, in a, ref as a reflection in a mirror. So it may not necessarily be 100% clear right now. Maybe we're not Maybe we don't have quite enough light <laughs> in our lives at this moment to see exactly what is, uh, you know, what God's trying to show us. But then when we enter the, uh, you know, when we enter our eternity, we will know fully. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't know anything whilst we're here, because we know in, and see in part and those parts that we know and see are explained and revealed to us through the Spirit from God. Now, here's some examples. For, for myself, I've had a lot of visions and dreams and stuff about my life. Uh, some, uh, a lot of mine come through uh, prophetic dreams. So I, I dream at night. Uh, it, it's not regular. I'm, I'm, I don't dream very much at all. But when I do have a dream, I know when it's from God. So 
uh, you know, one of the, many of the dreams that I have are quite abstract. <laughs> they require interpretation, which, uh, you know, praise God, he's given me the, uh, the gifting of being able to interpret dreams as well. So here's, here's one of my dreams. Uh, myself and my wife and daughter were walking through a uh, sort of like the, the bush in Australia. I had this dream when, I was, when we were living in Australia, walking through uh, some, some bushland. There was no other houses or roads or anything around. We're just walking through some sparse bush. And beside us was a, a very small wooden aqueduct that was uh, around about one meter tall. And, uh, you know, the aqueduct was just a very small little channel built made of wood on, on legs of wood. And it was going off into the distance and we were following this aqueduct. And it was, it was almost like that was, you know, that was our sustenance, that was our source of life, it was our water as we were traveling. And then all of a sudden, for some reason, we decided that there was a different direction that we needed to go in. And so instead of walking beside the aqueduct, we made a 90 degree turn and we walked off into the distance, into the bush, away from the aqueduct that we were next to, into the unknown, if you will. Now, through interpretation, um, that dream to me meant that, you know, yes, we were, we were walking alongside God. He was our life source and we continued on. Uh, the aqueduct was the church, was a representation of the church that we were in. And it was a representation of us walking away from that into something else that God made clear to me later on through some other dreams and visions. But that's the type of spiritual insight that we can expect sometimes when, when God reveals things to us. It might not be super clear, it might be a little bit abstract and require us to talk to other people that, that have the gift of interpreting dreams and visions in a spiritual sense. Um, but that's, uh, that's the type of thing that, uh, that God reveals to me. I've also had many, many dreams about other people, uh, other people's lives in terms of spiritual vision. And every single one has turned out to be accurate. Now, that's not a flex on my part. <laughs> that's a flex on God's part, because all I'm doing is receiving and delivering the message. God is the one that proves himself faithful and true uh, in that process. One thing I know for sure is that God will give you spiritual insight and spiritual vision for your own life, because that's something that he wants all of us to have. He wants us to be able to have a clear vision and clear insight as to where we're going, where he's leading us. He doesn't want to lead us into a dark place that we don't know where we're going. He will absolutely reveal things to you about your future if you'll allow him to. Beyond that, as I said, some people do have the ability to dream dreams and have visions and insight into other people's lives when God allows them to, either through prophecy or, as I said, dreams or, or visions. If, if you have that gift, <laughs> if you have that gift of being able to see uh, spiritually into other people's lives and journeys, we have to be ready and willing and open to receiving and communicating that insight and those visions to others. But also always be willing to submit those dreams and visions to other people who have that same spiritual gift of insight into other people's lives. It's, it's absolutely biblical to have confirmation of something before communicating it. So we have to be able to be humble enough to submit those visions and dreams and insights to other people who have that gift as well for confirmation before we go, uh, you know, telling other people that this is what's going to happen. <laughs> so how do we make our spiritual vision clearer so that we can see better, further, with more insight and surety of our future. 
Well, one way to do it is just like we talked about there is to talk to other people who have the gift of spiritual insight and vision into other people's lives. God will reveal to them a confirmation if that is in fact what God is trying to show you. Another way is light. And this is what we were talking about earlier. We were talking about, you know, in forms of the physical realm of sight, we need bright light to be able to see. Nothing frustrates me more than walking into a dimly lit room and trying to, you know, read something. It's very frustrating. So the more light that we can get, the better it is for us. So for our spiritual sight, who is the light? (laughs) Because the more light we have, the clearer things become. So in John chapter 8 verse 12, it tells us where the light comes from. And in John 8 12, this is actually Jesus talking. He says, when Jesus spoke to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Now, Jesus is talking about spiritual vision here. If we want clarity in our spiritual vision, we need to get close to the light. We need to get closer to Jesus. And in another part of the Bible, uh, God says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. So if we make an effort to get closer to Jesus, he's going to get closer to us. And the impact of that is going to be so much more light and clarity through our spiritual insights and visions. I also want to say here that in terms of spiritual insight, spiritual vision, uh, you know, in some respects, you know, getting a, a clearer picture for our future, it's not to be confused with things like fortune telling, crystal balls, tarot cards, star signs, all of these sorts of things are absolute, I'm going to say this, I hope it doesn't offend you, but they are witchcraft. They are absolutely not of God at all because none of these, none of those things involve God in the process. They will lead you down a very, very dark path where there is no light at all. And in fact, where you end up is in such a dark place that you end up stumbling around in the dark until the unfortunate bitter end. (laughs) It's a tool that the enemy uses to fool you into thinking that you're getting insight into the future, where in fact he's leading you into a place where it's complete and utter darkness. So if if you are in that place, if you've gone down that path, about face, 180 degrees, and get out of there as soon as possible is my encouragement to you. I know many things about my future through spiritual vision and spiritual insight. I don't know it all, but I know a lot. I find the closer that I get to Jesus, the light, the more time I spend with him, the more that gets revealed to me and the clearer things become. I also want to point out at this point that I am no more special than you. I am not a a superhuman. I'm not, you know... Uh, chosen by God in any way that's more special than you are. I have my gifts, uh, preaching, teaching, being a father of the faith, uh, you know, spiritual vision and insight, prophecy. But I guarantee you that you also have gifts that I don't have. (laughs) Okay? So don't think that I'm super special or anything about this. You also have gifts. You also have the ability to have and receive spiritual insight for your life. I'm certain that you also have spiritual eyes that Jesus can open. And 
if they already are open, open even further and shed more light uh, on your situation for your future. To close today, I am going to pray, but it's going to be a little different. I'm going to pray a scripture uh, from Ephesians that speaks so insightfully into what we've been talking about today. I think it's something that uh, that speaks to me, and I hope it speaks to you. And so anyway, I'm just going to get into it. I'm going to pray this over all of us. Again, this comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. Amen. Well, worship is right after this, so don't go anywhere. We've got some great worship coming up. Uh, check out the website. Uh, you'll find out great things on there, how to give to the ministry. There's all sorts of ways through PayPal, e-transfer, Tithely, all sorts of things on there. Uh, you'll also find out about our ministry, our church, um, how you can get more involved as well. We're always looking for people to help and volunteer. Uh, and, uh, and also on our connect page, you'll find ways to connect with us. Uh, it's, uh, it's sometimes very hard for us to reach out to you watching on YouTube. We don't know who you are, where you are, but we would love to get in contact with you. We'd love to uh, start the conversation. We'd love to know more about you. We'd love to be able to pray for and with you. And a great place uh, that we uh, facilitate to do that is at our live weekly Zoom Connects, which if you're watching this, that means you've got an internet connection. And of course, by extension, that means that you can join a Zoom call. So on the Connect page, there are details of that. We'd love to have you there and join us um, where we talk a little bit more about the message and we all discuss it together and learn from each other as well as from God, of course, and, uh, and have a great time of prayer. So again, thank you so much for joining us. Have a fantastically blessed, brilliant week. God bless you. cares on the Lord for he will never let you down for God is love love, love, love the Lord is on our side he loves us he loves us he fills us with hope and joyfulness For God is good without fail And His mercy is everlasting The Lord will fight for you, fight for you We only have to be silent He fills us with hope and joyfulness He fills us with His peace
his presence in Let his anointing flow over us now Let it flow over us Let it flow over us Let his presence in Let his anointing flow over us now Let it flow over us Let it flow over us Let his presence in Let his anointing flow over us now Let it flow over us Let it flow over us Let his presence in Let his anointing flow over us now Let it flow over us Let it flow over us He fills us with hope and joyfulness He fills us with His peacefulness Let the joyfulness and peacefulness flow over us now
I've got two fists full of worried work And my fingers hurt from holding on so tight You come and you take my hands Cause you understand how to make these burdens light Your love is such sweet relief Your love is so I've got two fists full of worried work And my fingers hurt from holding on so tight You come and you take my hands Cause you understand how to make these burdens light Your love is such sweet relief Your love is so Your plan